Grass is greener where there is more water. There are more workers in the industrial part of the city. As you climb higher on the mountains, it gets colder. And snow that falls never melts away. Explorers prefer to settle near the sea and lakes. Cars run faster on the roads as compared to off-road. There are more pigeons around the houses with the sheds. Computer fans spin faster when it gets hotter. Behind every successful man, there is a woman. Behind her is his wife. So what is this about, you might ask. We are talking about events and its cause. We are talking about attributes today. Let's see what is the simplest definition of attribute on the internet. To believe that something was caused or done by something. In computing language, an attribute is a specification that defines a property of an object, element or file. So what does this mean? Anything we see around us and every event is changing the outcome of several different things. Simplest example, if it rains today, the ground will get wet, frogs might appear, density of the people on the road might reduce, grass will look greener and the weather will be pleasant and my internet might would stop working. So all of that is interlinked. This means when making stuff in 3D on larger scale for the purpose of CGI animation VFX, if we wire an event, an outcome of multiple objects and properties in procedural way, any effect causes, then it would mean that we have made a, an interdependent system which probably relies on few parameters rather than changing hundreds of things across the landscape. Now, what does this mean in simple terms? This means when dealing with large data and scenarios in 3D, instead of feeding the system with information of every independent model and its material, feeding the details of everything, we can link the effects and causes with the help of data such as vector, floats and custom attributes, which will output things based on combined effect of whatever is the information being fed inside these nodes and change things in more dynamic fashion across the multiple objects rather than depending on us to feed the location of every model and scatter things manually. What if I told you you have already been dealing with attributes without realizing it? Remember the vertex weight proximity modifier, the distance of an object modifying the vertex weight or using temperature attributes or density attributes from the mantle floor to light up the fire and smoke? or wrapping an object over another object with shrink wrap where the vectors of one object are being transferred to other objects. So under the hood, these are attributes working for us packaged in simple modifiers so that we can understand. In fact, when we were making things in geometry proximity and raycast chapter, we were sort of transferring and sharing attributes if you have not realized it. So we have done this in past, but we haven't realized it. We haven't realized its full potential. So if you are new to attribute, this chapter is going to be all about attributes and this is more like we are jumping on to the most beneficial part of the geometry nodes. But since today's chapter is dedicated to attributes only, let's discuss this in more depth and with more examples and see what all we can make out of it. So let me give you another example. In 3D, when you're making a human with, let's say, tough skin, how would you make it? You will basically manipulate the shape of a character's mesh in the way that it would appear muscular or you could say the manipulate the position of vectors in computer language if we talk about and to make it appear tanned or tough in the render you may apply some dark textures to some areas which were exposed by combining textures and values or you could say float values and when it renders it appears as a rough skinned character so the tough skin is an attribute you could say a reference, a name we can simply understand and recall and recognize among the, the crowd of the data that we are working with. A name given to group of information stored on characters geometry marking the area, be it vectors, floats. Now let's say if we were to make a few body hair to appear, appear on these areas, we could simply link the density of hair with tough skin attribute and hair only would appear on that particular part. Attributes are everywhere in software. Some are pre-built attributes such as position, scale, density, temperature, velocity, normal, etc. which software provides you already. And some you can make by yourself like sweet, grass, river, hot blonde girl crowd, parking, call it anything you want. Now does it make sense? If it still doesn't make sense, don't worry. Let's make a practical example out of it. So in 
enough talk let's see what this is all about i'm inside the blender and i'm using a 3.1 the latest version so let's split this window and bring a classic plane that we have so in this window i'm going to bring a geometry node network and split this window again and bring another thing which we are discussing for the first time which is spreadsheet now in the spreadsheet you can instantly see there is something a list which is basically which says vertex and then it says position so basically this is giving us the list of position for every vertex we are, we have four vertices here and we have list of coordinates of all these four vertices 0 1 2 3 4 anything if i change here is going to update so if i move this in x direction y direction z direction or in all the three dimensions it's going to update here and more number of vertices i'm adding here the more the more data will be populated here so as we were discussing there are a few attributes which come within the software rebuilt like the position normal and uh, other dynamic attributes like uh, coming from the fluid sim simulator like and the density flame temperature etc and then you can make a few attributes of your own now the most basic way of creating an attribute is by simply creating one vertex group as soon as i click on a new vertex group that is going to appear here so on every vertex now other than position there is another attribute which is carrying some data so at this moment there is nothing on it so everything is zero 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 but let's start painting something on this and i'm going to just drag a stroke of paint here you will see whatever vertices are coming within this range will have their values updated here so let's call this one river for now and that is going to update here as well so now we have two attributes one is the position and one is the river so all that is good now what is the use of this so let's bring a new geometry node network here now in this geometry node network by default you have geometry input and geometry output and anything you do in between which is uh, let's say merge by distance is going to override the output here and the points and anything all that will show up here as well but what about the other kind of attributes where are we going to write that so this is giving us geometry input and output which is like position and number of vertices like this list basically but what about the river input and output how can we modify this one or to use this one you will have to bring this attribute inside the geometry node from these parts of the blender so let's say if we wanted to set position and create our actual river in this mesh by bringing by changing the position of the points of the parts which are painted so since position is vector let's do some math in the vector map and uh, since we only want to affect the z height i'm going to use combine xyz to break it into the three float numbers now if i take this z height and plug this here then as soon as i do that you will see the z will appear in the group inputs on the modifier panel now what this means is i can now change it from here as well or i can click on input toggle and then from here i can load the attributes that i have from the other parts of the blender which are not from inside the geometry node so river which is the attribute that we made from the vertex width that appears here and as soon as we load that that is going to displace our plane but not in the way that we want so let's map range this pretty simple so we have now an actual river we have a river attribute and this attribute we are importing inside the geometry node now so let's disconnect this for now now what about if we wanted to make an attribute within the geometry nodes let's say if i wanted to displace this mesh based on a noise texture so now we have this texture which is modifying the shape of the geometry this attribute that we have but at this moment we haven't named this attribute we can't really use this attribute in other parts of the blender so just like how we use the inputs how we plug the input here and it appeared on the on the modifier panel simply you'll have to click on the factor of the noise texture and plug that on the geometry output now that we want to send it to out of the geometry node we will connect this to group output and that will appear here now so by default it's going to give you name based on the input and output you have plugged this in from for let's say this input that we had plugged in for the river in the z it automatically picked up z from here or if i click this one and plug it here it's going to give me two max but all that doesn't make sense if you want to change the names of these so you could uh, go to the side panel by pressing n and here you can see the 
group input and group group output so this is the group input this is the group output any inputs listed here will be listed here any inputs listed in the group output will be listed here as well so here you can change the name so let's call this one river and let's call this one let's say terrain so the noise texture that we are sending out here we don't want to just call it factor or noise let's call it terrain or landscape it's much more recognizable all right so now you know how to import attribute inside the blender and how to export outside the blender but even though we have added the landscape here this is still not an attribute which is written on every part of the geometry and it hasn't appeared in the geometry spreadsheet as well that's because although we have given it a name here we haven't given attribute a name we have just given the socket a name so let's give attribute this name let's call this one landscape that doesn't matter or you can call it terrain anything as soon as i do that now all this the effect of this on the geometry is being written in the landscape attribute now that we have exported this attribute from within the geometry node to the other part of the blender we can use it anywhere else so now we can use it in the other part of the blender so let's say if we wanted to shade this model with some simple material give it some landscape sort of a color and then bring our attribute by simply bringing an attribute here attribute node just like what we used in the month of flow section i want to combine these two materials based on the the landscape deformation that is coming from the geometry node noise texture so now that we i have called the geometry attribute named landscape i can simply plug that here in the factor now what this will do is this is going to color the geometry based on the attribute landscape and merge these two colors now i can map range this further now on very basic level we have created a network so where this geometry this attribute is basically affecting everything is affecting the shape of this model and also the shader based on the height and and the depth it creates so if i change this noise texture here let me subdivide this plane further yeah it looks much better now so if i change the coordinates of this texture here the 4d texture here then it's not just changing the displacement it's also coloring based on the deformation so if i map range this one it's automatically going to update our landscape attribute anything i do in between this network is going to update our attribute landscape actually let's put this one right here so that we are not just changing the shader we are also changing the input that, that is going into the displacement and you can keep modifying this attribute and, and repurpose it for anything you want so don't think of it like what we are doing is just creating displacement and shader think of it like this you have this information and you can keep map ranging it and keep repurposing it and make many more things on it let's say if you map range this further and use that attribute to scatter some trees on the greener areas or uh, if you could uh, or you could also change the shader further and bring some water material and cre create the water bodies so that is what we are going to do let's create some much more complex example with this so i hope you are clear about how the attributes are created how the attributes are imported inside the geometry node and how we can export it and now we are going to create the example that you have seen in the introduction and um, create many more things which are being influenced by attributes and not just discuss one texture attribute and also use the position attributes and different nodes which are here in the attributes section of the geometry node so let's do that so here i have a new file a simple plane with a dimension of around 38 meters by 38 meters and pretty dense mesh and there are a few other objects like a simple fence a pretty simple cylinder actually and a clump of grass which i made with the help of geometry node itself but we are not going to talk about that in this chapter so we are going to try and combine all sort of different attributes coming from the vertex weight coming from the textures and coming from the vectors of the geometry so let's bring a new node network and in this node network we are going to plug in all sort of attributes so first thing first let's create one attribute called simple path on this landscape i want to paint a weight which is going to define that this is a walking path so the grass will be in areas around it but not on the path 
now simple point distribution on this object we are going to distribute some grass control shift drag for joining these two nodes into joint geometry and then we want to bring this path into the geometry node network and we can do that by plugging this here or simply by adding a group input here so now that we have density in the modifier panel instead of flat value we are going to toggle this and load the path here so the grass is showing up in the areas we have painted values but it's not much we we're gonna have to increase the values so before that let, let me just invert these values by with the help of color ramp uh, simply inverted so we just want dense grass in the these areas and for the instances of the grass we can simply bring this grass and plug that in the instances and randomize yeah let's keep it subtle actually for now so i'm going to randomize the value of the scale you can also use the same value into the scale as well and then map range it and then you can combine actually these both with the help of multiply Control shift drag to combine two nodes so now we have grass it looks pretty fine we can also change the z rotation let me hide these two hide this one so we can change the z rotation with another random value node so we have one attribute now in the spreadsheet which is called path and that is working and that is guiding our the scattering of the grass now we are going to bring a simple curve here let's scale this like this so what we will do is we will create some fences with the help of this in this network i'm going to bring this guide and relative coordinates basically anything if there is a rotation or position we we want to keep that so first let me just combine all of these into with the control j so we have one simple node network for the grass let's keep it clean because it's going to get messy in a while so for the fences i have this guide and on this guide let's bring another join geometry here and we are going to combine this path with the join geometry shift f to reroute it shift f drag so now bring fences here and on uh, this path i'm going to bring curve to points and then instances on points and use these fences as instance and we can increase the number of these and uh, do the same thing combine xyz for uh, random values in the in the z rotation random value so we have some fences and then we can do the random value for the scale as well let's increase the number of points here so why i have brought some fences here this is to discuss another thing which is called attribute transfer transfer attribute so the path wherever the path is i don't want fences here i don't want these fences to block the path so what can i do to do that so you might would think uh, let's load the path attribute right in the selection here and uh, let's see if that works so i'm going to bring the density here which is actually using path attribute and let's bring that in the selection so as you can see it's not really working these two are two different geometries and uh, it, it really doesn't work like that so i'm going to bring a node called transfer attribute so i will take this geometry which is carrying the path attribute and i'm going to take this attribute which is loaded with the path vertex weight and we are going to plug that in the selection here and as soon as i do that you can see some of the fences disappeared now we need to just invert this one i can just bring a color ramp and uh, flip the values like this we can control the values tighten these a bit so if i select the path now and try to rotate this so anything crossing that attribute is going to get influenced by that attribute and since in the transfer attribute we are using the nearest face interpolated that means it's going to automatically pick up the nearest face and its attribute and assign on this one so now we have an attribute which is coming from vertex weight and it's being transferred to other object as well
So we have ground and we have fences. Shift F to combine any common inputs. So now let's bring another attribute and this we are going to use to set position of our geometry. We want to set position of the geometry that we have with the help of vector math. And we just want to add into the Z. So again, combine X, Y, Z. And we're going to bring a Musgrave texture. So let's scale this one like this. We have some displacement going on, which is respecting the attribute of the path. The one thing here is that the guide, the path on which we have scattered the fences is not actually following the this terrain that we have created. First of all, let's just combine this. So we want these fences to take some attributes from this ground and these attributes we are not talking about the path or the texture we want this path that we have for the curve fences to sort of conform to the shape of the ground and stay on the ground basically this path that we have this curve we want to set position of this curve so let's set position of this curve we want to displace this curve based on the position of this object here so let's do another transfer attribute. Let's bring it inside the this uh, frame as well. So I want to pick up this geometry, which is after the displacement, the, not the original geometry. We want the displaced geometry. So let's take this geometry and plug that into the source of the transfer attribute, which is going in the fences section. So we want to transfer the vectors, the position of this geometry, the points. We want to transfer the vector and it's going to ask us which attribute you want to transfer. So let's say position here. We want to transfer attribute position exactly like this. And so here we had the source geometry and it asked us what attribute to transfer. So we transferred the path attribute which is coming from this area to here. So since this was a gray black and white values it automatically picked up or i think we assigned a float value to this so this is gray but now we are talking about vectors so this is blue so we are going to take this and put it into the position so now if i change the shape of the ground it's going to change the shape of the fences as well but the problem is it's sort of moving but it's not completely conforming to the shape of the ground that's because the path that we have is only made of two points so let's resample that curve so the curve that we have which is uh, this one let's resample this let's add more curves to it let's make it 30 and see what happens i hope it works let me just isolate the path here so before the resample curve it was like this now after the resample curve it's like this so i'm going to hide the original path that we used all right, so we are building up something slowly. Now the ground have some deformation based on an attribute. Attribute is being transferred to, to these fences and these fences are conforming to the ground with the help of transfer attribute. Now let's randomize these fences further. looks much more natural now so here we are making fences with the help of a path that we have now what if we wanted to make fences around the, the selection of the path so let's say here i wanted to make fences which is blocking the road with the help of attribute so attribute that we have made here for the path can be repurposed so let's take this geometry that i have for the set position and let's bring our delete geometry node here. Let's isolate this one. So everything is deleted at this moment. But what if I take the same path that I have attribute and use that into the selection. So now the geometry is being deleted based on the attribute that we have. Now I can bring a ramp here, color ramp and add some more points into this. And maybe map range this. So now I have repurposed the attribute that I had created. Now what I can do is bring math, boolean math and select not. So this is going to invert the selection. 
and now I can simply do the merge by distance. Why do I have a feeling that there is a much better way to do this? But anyways, so merge by distance, we are going to simply merge. And then what I can do is change this to mesh to curve and bring the same fences that we had. Curve to points, instances of the fences, instances on points. And uh, let's join this into this. And then we can keep on doing the same thing, random value for the scale, match it to the other fences and uh, resample the curve and maybe do all those things that we did for this one. I can copy the combine XYZ from here, paste it here and plug this one into simple rotation. And the scale is already set. The same attribute, which is uh, this one, every time I modify this, it's going to create fences based on the new repurposed attribute that I have here. You can name it if you want, but since we won't be using it for anything else other than this, I'm not going to name it or export this. All right, so I think this needs some more work. Merge by distance, maybe. Yeah, I guess this is better. And since this geometry is already coming from this ground, we don't need to actually transfer the attributes to position these according to this. So I think uh, these can be reduced and uh, count evaluated length. Yeah, this is much better. Now, another thing I want to do with these fences here, let me just cut down these fences for now. It's too crowded. Another thing I want to do with these fences here is connect these fences. So the path that we are using, I can uh, bring a joint geometry node. Plug this one into right after this path, the fences that we have created. Into this, I'm going to connect the original geometry, the or original curve, and uh, then transform this into the Z direction. So I have the duplicate copy of the same curve. I can actually use this input, which is after the resample curve and then set position of this curve that we have created the new curve and uh, transfer attribute again. Sorry, it's, it's going to get messy a little. So whatever poles that we have made for the fences, I want to take that geometry for the transfer attribute. Sorry, not this one. Take that geometry. I want to transfer position of these points which are on these poles and use that position vector value of this position and plug that into the position of the new wire that we have just made and plug this here. Let's realize this geometry first. Yeah, and the instances needs to be realized to be considered as not instances but geometry. So now the new wire that we have made is snapping onto these surfaces, these poles. So the position attribute is picking up. So that is good news. So we can tweak this further. We can just use the transform or make another duplicate of this. Control Shift D and uh, maybe combine these two. So now we have two wires and then you can keep on doing curve to mesh and all that stuff that we do. Curve circle. Now the same thing we can do with the other fences, but that is for later. So we are slowly building up. I think uh, another thing I want to do here is, now another thing I want to do here is based on this attribute, the terrain that we have made, based on this, I want to extract this sum of the area on which I want to create some houses or hut or a small civilization, basically, if there is any. So let's take the same geometry after the set position node and uh, delete this geometry again but this time based on this musgrave texture that is coming in here let's map range this so here i'm just taking the same attribute and trying to map range this again so what i want to do is basically extract some area where we can basically make some wooden bamboo art for uh, people who are living on the land. So let's plug this into the joint geometry node, which is pretty small here, not visible.
Now here I have some more objects here in the scene I have brought in and this is also made with the help of geometry node but not, not going to discuss this here. So I want to scatter this in some of the areas which are extracted from this attribute here. So simply bring in this here and uh, let's distribute some points on the faces and uh, we can instance instances on points and uh, use these houses that we have as instances but we don't want these houses to be on the path so for the density we can take this path and basically use a color ramp and simply invert this one so it won't be on the it won't overlap the path here let me just transform these transform this scale these down Let's take the normal and put it into the rotation from the distribution method. So it looks much, much better now. I think the density could be more like this. And uh, let's take all of this and set shade smooth. Yeah, this looks much better. All right, so we are slowly building up here. And uh, the only thing I want to do now is uh, let's get rid of uh, these fences that we created around the path because this is filling up too much. So instead, we are going to create fences around these houses. So to do that, let's uh, bring the geometry that we have, the displaced geometry. And uh, let's make another delete geometry here. And based on the same attributes that we used for the landscape, we are going to delete this geometry, the selection here. And now I can simply bring the color ramp and maybe flip it or something. And then just try to find some land here. Merge by distance or something. Yeah, something like this. Actually, we can use delete geometry. And then uh, let's bring face neighbors. Instead of face neighbor neighbors, let's bring edge neighbors and put it into this the del new delete geometry node let's make it face let's bring a compare node so if i add one here and this is going to simply so this is going to leave only the edges outer edges for us so this is going to just find the neighboring edges and I'll leave this one here and then you can do just resample curve actually mesh to curve first mesh to curve resample curve and maybe set spline type set handle type and this is going to give us smooth island here as you can see so this we are getting now so every time i change the texture we are going to get this another repurposed attribute so let's put that here as well and combine everything and see what is going on now only thing we need to do is do the same thing again instances on points and bring uh, fences put that here and a random value for the fences scale. And let's take this curve and uh, transform. Let's join geometry here and curve to mesh. So anything which I'm not explaining here is already discussed in the previous chapters. So it's quite lengthy chapter. I don't want to overburden you with this, with the information which is already shared. So transform here. We can actually bring another transform. Join these two like this. So quite some work you are done. And uh, if you are following along. So now we can keep changing the landscape and everything else is going to accordingly change. These houses are contained within these fences which are not really well finished but you get the point right. It's not about perfecting this scene. It's about understanding this procedure. Now I'm just simply going to tweak these values and try to achieve a bit more better visual of the landscape. So all that is going to be about tweaking the values here. I'm just going to speed things up a bit.
All right, so I think we are pretty much done here. The only thing now we want to do is transfer the attribute that we have used for displacing this ground and use that in the material section so that instead of flat grassland, we could add some sort of a water puddles or something. So what I'm going to do is simply take this Musgrave texture and make an attribute out of this. So even though we have been using this attribute, now we need to export this. So just plug this one into our group output name this one terrain or something now let's go to the shader editor and i'm not going to make the shader from the scratch so here i have a shader let's bring cycle render and first thing first let's bring one uh, environment sky so i'm going to first set the cycle render samples to 16 or something otherwise the voice is going to crack let's bring one uh, sky texture all right so i think it's a lovely view so let's bring the attribute that we have for the terrain in here in the material so that we can use that for the reflection and uh, the highlights here attribute is working fine as we can see here around these areas i want this to be reflective so this i'm going to use into the specular and maybe map range this sorry map range sort of have more contrasts let's see if we find some highlights here i do see some reflection let me reduce the roughness so maybe it would look more like water let's do one thing in the geometry node when we're using this texture let's map range this so what will happen is basically all the negative areas, the river and uh, all these areas are going to get flattened. So nothing is going to go below zero so that we, we will get some flat surfaces here. But this is so much better. And now let's go back to the shader editor and let's see if we can um, add something into the roughness. Now let's go to the geometry node at network and uh, let's start assigning materials to these different parts. Let's bring set material node and in this I have uh, some material for the wood. It's a pretty simple material. It's simple wave texture in the in the displacement or you can put it in the bump. I'm too lazy at this moment. I don't want to drag this chapter further. I hope it's not a deal breaker but I'm going to assign the same material on rest of the things. For the ground roughness, what we can do is uh, add another layer of uh, detail, which is uh, the specular can be mixed with the mix RGB. I just want to mix it with these colors and uh, let's multiply this. Let's see if we can find some good visual with math node. I just don't want this water to be so clean and it should be a bit smudgy looking fine i guess and uh, the last thing i want to do is to add some more value into this is bring a simple cube and let's bring a new node shader volume scatter bring a musgrave texture and put it into the density So now we have some clouds, but these are not the best looking clouds, but it does something, I guess. You can map range this. With the clouds, it looks much better. So, now the whole point of this exercise is now you have this landscape let's have a look at this it looks magical now the most magical part of this whole exercise is that now that you have everything you can just go back to your geometry node network select the ground and now if you just simply start tweaking this texture let's just plug this value into the group input so that we can access from the modifier panel here so if i start changing this number let me just enable the denoiser. 
now this one value is controlling everything and we can create hundreds of thousands of variation of everything if i tweak this attribute further all those things we referenced with this are going to change I completely forgot about the fences that we had made around the river. So let's connect those and see. Now, if I go to the shader editor and uh, world, let's set the altitude to 2000 or something. You can just keep on creating n numbers of images. I simply love this view. I, I can't really explain the excitement that I had when I first made this. We are actually not even close to the perfection. We haven't made everything uh, in well manner. It's like it's not finished and there is not much texturing going on. There's not much details going on in the objects. We are just simply discussing an example with very basic few things, very simple, most primitive objects. And one last thing is that if I go to the weight paint now and if I start painting, let me just uh, set this set elevation of the sun a bit higher if i go back to the weight paint and if i start painting here now so things are going to adapt accordingly so we can uh, paint more path here we can add some more grass here uh, remove the grass here add more that is going to automatically add the fences here we can paint more paths here if you want more cross sections like maybe one road going from here to here and one road going from here to here so that's about it for today i think this was pretty lengthy chapter and i really really hope that this takes away the fear that you have especially i had this fear about the attributes attributes are absolute fun and it's just that uh, this uh, the term could be a bit confusing maybe thrown around a little bit too much but there's nothing more to attribute but think of it like assigning a name to any information whether it's vector texture colors uh, taking that and combining that under a named hood like the terrain texture that we have made here and we are exporting that to the shader uh, we are using the terrain attributes uh, the position attribute to uh, displace the fences we are also extracting the areas for the island and this is on a very basic level you you can do much more than this and uh, and if you really want to learn more about uh, attributes you might would find it useful if you watch some Houdini tutorials and see how those people are using attributes in different ways. I hope this example sort of uh, opens you up a bit towards this new side of the geometry node, which we haven't discussed. So in previous chapters, we were only discussing the basics and going through some basic nodes. But uh, from chapter 11 to further chapters, we are going to talk about a few procedural stuff. So today we talked about some attributes and how we can create some procedural landscapes and in the next chapter next two chapters we are going to talk about how to make procedural animations like maybe an isometric view coming together or maybe a product exploding or something and then we can also talk about how to make simple generators like a simple stone generator simple fences generator simple bookshelves generator or simple things so which can ease up your work or simple stairs generator and i'm pretty sure my knowledge about this topic is pretty limited as well well, with whatever knowledge i have whatever i could clarify i hope this helps you and if i have made any mistake here it's a pretty vast topic so if you have any more suggestions you can let me know in the comment section so and if you're interested in downloading the files you can get this file from the gumroad all this this file and all the previous files from this series are available on the gumroad for you to download all the later files will be added to this uh, collection as well buy it now all the future updates you will get without any extra cost now if you have been following along and if you have been make, making some renders on your own once you are done just grab a cup of tea or grab a cup of coffee and start scrolling these numbers and start to see the magic happen in front of you make as many renders out of this you want and uh, this is just a lovely view this reminds me of witcher for some reason the witcher had this lush greenery nice clear sky saturated colors so it does bring some memories from that game 
If you find this chapter useful, give it a like and do share it with your colleagues, whoever is interested in the geometry nodes. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you have any doubts and leave it in the comment section. I will see you guys in the next chapter and also check out the other series which is going on which is about the show title design and uh, we are going to cover a lot about the design in that section and if you have stumbled upon this chapter directly about the geometry node just keep in mind this is an ongoing series and it's been running for quite a few months now all this all the chapters from the previous sessions are in the playlist section so that's about it take care i'll see you guys in the next chapter and uh, happy jamming with the geometry nodes thank you take care thank you for tuning in